Sonia, so why is it that you have chose to serve at Greenville University as faculty? Honestly, um, Doug Faulkner has been uh, throughout, since I left Greenville, Doug has called me and said, hey, would you like to coach softball? Could you do this? Could you do that? And um, I have always loved Greenville. I've always had the dream, even since I left, of of coming back home. I still, every time I drive up the hill into Greenville, it feels like coming home. Um, Greenville is where I was discipled. It is where I learned what it meant to have a personal relationship with Christ. It is where I sat and um, just was able to figure out my faith for myself. Um, I was a very, very new Christian when I came to Greenville, and it was people who spent time with me, like Lori Gaffner and Ish Smith and Bob Briner and so many others, a Doug Faulkner at that time, right, um, that I I knew that Greenville was special, and for me, it's, it's home. It's going home. It is coming home. Uh, so many awesome things happened in my life, and I really... I attribute a lot of just who I am today to Greenville and to um, the way that it shaped shaped my life. So for me to be able to come back and serve at Greenville and hopefully be a Greenville giant to our students now, the way that so many were to me, um, that's my heart. That's my passion. I, I, I love to teach. My favorite thing to do is to get up in the morning and I every day I say I get to go to work because I get to share space with students who are just like me, um, who might be searching, who might um, might not even know the Lord, right? And so for me, just to be able to pour into them the way that others poured into me, that's that's my calling. It's life. Yeah, it's, you do a lot of things though. Like, so you <laughs> come here, you travel in, you teach, you go, you go back to um, Springfield, Litchfield, and run your business. Uh, you have, uh, uh, tell us just a little bit about that. So you actually were, were on a TV show. I was. Year, and yeah, you so. almost <laughs> like one, almost, but we'll talk about that later. But anyway, but now you, you help others in so many different ways. So tell us a little bit about what else you're doing. So um, my, my roles are, I teach full-time at Greenville. Um, I love that. It's it's I love it. My another role is I own and operate two weight loss clinics. They're called Losing It with Sonia Jones. One is Litchfield, uh, housed in Litchfield. The other uh, is housed in Springfield. And honestly, I that's the way for me to pay forward everything that I learned on The Biggest Loser. The Biggest Loser, while well, five million people invited me into their home every week um, to watch me shrink physically. I was growing emotionally and mentally and spiritually. And for me, that's where the real win came in. And when I walked onto the ranch, I hated who I was. I hated who I was physically. I knew I had a lot to offer, um, relationally and that I was a good person, but I hated who I was physically. And, um, so now the fact that I can take what I learned on the show and being eight years out now, right? So I'm I'm eight years out and help people transform their lives um, is amazing. That's why I've opened these clinics. We also coach all over the, the country. We also, um, you know, we're virtual as well. And so um, I, I do that. I own and operate two of those clinics. And then I also am a full-time caregiver for my mom and dad and my five pit bulls. So I, every night I make sure that uh, my parents and my Dogs are fed, watered, and kenneled, and uh, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it just, uh, it's, it's good. But that's that's my life right now. So two businesses: Greenville, mom, dad, dogs, and whatever else the Lord has. So I'm kind of an animal person too, but I don't think you can say kenneled for people. Well, but you can because I go in every night and just make sure that their doors are locked. I make sure they're fed, they're watered. You know, they're good to go. They're good to oh, go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, not a bad type of kennel like okay. two chain link involved I promise right. because I think you can go to prison for that like maybe maybe we're going to need to reboot maybe we're going to need to start over so yeah, yeah. Well, so they're they're in a home they're yeah. in a very nice home <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great so tell me like so I'm just fascinated by what you do at the waste weight loss clinics like are you talking like you know if I want to lose like five pounds or you know ten, so 10 pounds like do I go to you like what is this like what's this really about I can personally help you lose five, five or ten pounds that's that's no problem the people who come to me are people who have been great in many other areas, but are not great in this area. 
weight management is and weight loss, weight management is the one thing that I have found that it doesn't matter how much money you have, how successful you are, how studied you are, how disciplined you say you are. There are so many people who fall into that category that are great in so many areas, yet they can't get their weight under control. And that is because we don't recognize oftentimes that there is an emotional, <laughs> an emotional tie to food. So I would eat because I was happy, mad, sad, angry, lonely, embarrassed, all the things. And so I was, when I was um, in seventh grade, a little boy came up to me in, um, in Litchfield Middle School cafeteria. And it was a little boy who I thought was cute. He was athletic. And he walks up to me in the middle of the cafeteria and it's, it's square pizza day. You remember that square pizza? Yeah, I mean, that will cool. set you free. I'm talking like Holy yeah. Ghost power. But anyway, cinnamon rolls. Yeah. yeah. Oh, see? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I come up and I've got my tray and he goes, Hey, Sonia. And I turned around and looked at him. He's like, you're fat. And he said that in front of all of my friends at the table. And um, in that moment, I did what every delicate little junior high girl would do. I leaned back. I punched him dead in the face, knocked him out. <laughs> yeah, That's right. Jesus. Well, I mean, hey, it's before I knew Jesus, though. So anyway, I, mean, I think you can go to prison for that. Right. I know. Well, let's not talk about my high school career. But anyway, <laughs> so um, as at that point, he it's like, I didn't know I was overweight until he told me. Right. And then that became a snowball effect mm -hmm. to where the very next day in my life, what happened was something called Jenny Craig. <laughs> you know, I, I went on a diet mm -hmm. and no, it, it was Nutrisystem. And that became a lifelong habit for me until I went on, on the biggest loser. I went on the biggest loser and I was 283 pounds and I'm five foot four and 283 is great. If you're seven foot 11, right. Not so much if, if you're five, four. So for me now, that experience and several experiences after that um, really shaped who I was and got me to a point where, where I hated who I was. And now, not because of the weight loss, but because of the transformation in my life in all realms, I'm able to take that and share that with someone else who has felt the exact same thing. So I have women and men now, I have one woman who came in on two oxygen tanks mm -hmm. and now she's lost 168 pounds and she walks in like she owns a place, no oxygen tanks. I have people who are off of their diabetes medication. I have people who have thrown their sleep apnea um, machines away. I have people who are on no, they're not on insulin. They're not on all of these things. And it's because of weight loss. And I love that. I love that part of it. But what I love most about it is the fact that now when they walk in to see me, they walk taller, they smile brighter. And now when I have a conversation with them, they look me in the eye and weight loss isn't the key to happiness. But what weight loss is, is the key to the first door to unlock that, that first door into a world of possibilities that they, that they never knew was possible. And so that's why I do what I do. Um, it's all about paying forward what I learned on the show. Um, and so uh, the clinic is thriving. We've lost uh, about 8,000 pounds since we opened during the pandemic. Um, and wow. uh, one pound at a time, one person at a time. It's it's all about life change. Wow, that's that's remarkable. So you wrote a book about your experience as well. Uh, yeah, there it is, the 44 yeah, lessons. Um, and so why why are there 44 lessons? I, I'm <laughs> 45, I don't know. Come on, all right. 44 is the number. It's my number. So it was my number in, at Greenville. It's number, I played in softball. It was a number through semi-pro. I started with number 44 in junior high basketball, I think, and um, just played. Uh, I love 44. I'm obsessed with it. I lost 44 pounds on the show, uh, 144 pounds on the show. And um, if I, and that was God, like I, I couldn't have done that. Well, like that, crazy, that was yeah. amazing. Right. So um I get up on the 44. So I get up at either 444 or 544. If I can't get up on the 44, I half it and it's 22. So many people text me every day and say, Hey, it's 444. I'm praying for you. I just, it's an obsession. I've seen my favorite movie 44 times and I won't see it all the way through a 45th time because that would just be wrong. And I'm still seeing a counselor for that, but whatever. I love it. Well, my, my number was 11 all through everything. So is that like, you know, does that work? It is great because it's divisible, right? 44, yeah. 11 times four is? There you go, 44. There we go. It's perfect. <laughs> That's why I like you so much. <laughs> right. I just was part of it. I don't know. Right. 
So just, just to be clear, if you would have lost 45 pounds, though, you would have won the show. If I'd lost 145 pounds, yes, I would have won the show. I lost The Biggest Loser. I lost, so I lost the title of Biggest Loser. I lost $250,000 by 0.01% of my body weight, which was the <laughs> closest margin of loss in Biggest Loser history. Oh, man. <laughs> so that's right? rough. You have no idea. But you know what? Here's the thing. Even looking back right now today, if I could go back and rewrite that part of history, I wouldn't change it. I would not change it. Really? And here's why. Because for the first time in my life, see, I was a PE teacher at that time. And I had told my kids for so many years, it's not whether you win or lose, but it's how you play the game. And mm -hmm. I was able to model before them in mm -hmm. a, on a huge scale, mm -hmm. you know, in a quarter of a million dollar scale that... I was a person of my word and that I knew that if I was going to be beat, if I was going to be beaten by someone, that's fine. May the best person win. And he did. Toma beat me fair and square, right? Um, would I have liked the money? Would I have liked to not have a mortgage? Absolutely. But I was able to model in front of my students that what I said for all of those years was absolutely true, that, that we have a responsibility to win and lose with grace and integrity and mercy. And when the confetti was falling and it wasn't for me, I was the first one by Thomas' side, you know, and I was genuinely excited for him. Um, and, you know, I still look back and I won, you know, I, I won that show. I, I'm the only contestant from my season who has remained at a healthy weight post-show without weight loss surgery. I am able to pay forward so many things. And most importantly, you know, when I was on the way out to the show, it, it was really cool because, um, the Lord, you know, the Lord spoke to my heart on the way out there that, man, for me, this wasn't going to be my mission field. And so now when I got home from the show, I was able to um, invite people into a church and I was invite, able to invite people who would not otherwise consider the gospel mm -hmm. into a church to share my story. So I got to tell them about weight loss but also share Jesus with them. And otherwise they would not have been open to that. And that was my platform. And it's still my platform. I'm still talking all over the country about, you know, my biggest loser experience and, and, you know, sharing that with my classes at Greenville. And it just, um, it was just life-changing, but that's, it was my platform. It was my mission field. And I have ADHD that's off the chart. So I don't know what your question was. Oh, that's all right. I, I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to know either. Um, however, I have heard, you said, you said the word scale at some point and like the biggest scale. I think you were meaning like large scale, like yeah. influence, but but you actually have a, a scale like that <laughs> I'm just real interested in. And I'm and telling you, either I'm going to come to you or you're going to come to me. It's it's an in-body 570. So it'll do everything but wash and dry your dishes. Um, wow. And it, the scale. It's not really true, but it's, it's a $12,000 scale and I've got it at my clinic. I probably shouldn't say that it's all like there's cameras, so you can't steal it. But anyway, um, it's like another staff member, honestly, it's like another coach, because when you get on the scale, you are able to, to look, um, it tells you what your intracellular water is, your extracellular water is, um, how, how much, um, you know, how much does your skeletal muscle mass weigh? So how many pounds of muscle are you carrying? How much, how many pounds are in your trunk? How much does your right arm weigh? Your left arm, uh, your right leg, your left leg. And um, most importantly, it, it'll trend. It'll show us how much water is, is in our cells because as we, as people drop weight, one of the things we don't want them to do is drop muscle. And that's why I went with the program, the ideal protein program that I go with is because it's really good at preserving lean muscle. And so we can watch to make sure that their, that their muscle isn't dropping. It's good that the, that the water is dropping because then we know that they're not carbo carbohydrate loaded. However, that scale will tell us all of that. And it'll, it'll test it. It'll tell us um, what their BMR is, what their uh, basal metabolic rate is. Um, it'll tell me through a couple of calculations, um, how many extra pounds of pressure that a person takes with every step they take on their knees and hips, um, just by the additional fat that's on their body. Um, so yeah, it's, it's awesome. And like I said, either you're going to come to me or I'm going to bring it to you. Well, and, and that's because I want, I've had back issues and I'm convinced that part of it's because my right leg has had several surgeries sure. and my left leg, not as much. And so I think there's more muscle in one leg than the other. So like, 
sure. that could actually, because it pulls on your hips differently. So, so the scale could tell me like whether that's true. Absolutely. Yep. And, and it, I'll be able to look at it and tell if you, you know, like you can tell if someone's had, are they predominantly right armed or left armed? And if so, have they had an injury, you know, same, same with right leg and left yeah. leg. Pretty cool. That's very interesting. So going back to this whole water content in your cells, like, I'm just curious if, if you would have had just a little bit less to drink that day, <laughs> you have beat Toma because of your fluid intake. Is that, is that like a thing? Oh, okay. Um, all right. You, you want the behind the scenes story? Yes. I want to know. I want to okay. know like, what about the water? Cause I know that that makes yeah. a huge difference in your weight each day. Yes, it does. And when you weigh. I did not drink an ounce of water from three o'clock the day before. And I spent from 5 PM. I didn't eat or drink. I spent from 5 PM that night until I went to weigh in at 6 a.m. the next morning in the gym. So the day of the contest or the day that you weighed at the beginning? Oh gosh, you're killing me. Okay, so the day of the weigh-in, right? So the day of my final weigh-in, that's what what I did to get rid of all of the water. Now, here's what I did the night before. So, you know, they flew us all out to LA. They took uh, 60 people. Yeah. And um, about 60. And when I left, I didn't know if I was leaving for five days or five months, but they whittled us down all for 12 days. It was NBC executive. Um, you know, it, it was uh, interviews. It was seeing if we were healthy enough to make it. It was seeing a psychiatrist and I, I passed, you know, all the things. So anyway, right. Who'd have thought, but then um, what wound up happening through that was they brought us into a room on a Saturday night and said, congratulations, you are the, you're, you're the cast. Tomorrow morning is our official weigh-in. We're going to take you to the dinner. That night, here is what I had. Are you ready? Now, keep in mind, I was 283 pounds, all right? My starting weight. I had a 20-ounce T-bone. I had a uh, baked potato that was the size of your head. Oh. I probably had two salads. I probably had, um, oh man, like soda after soda after soda. I had, um, I was licking some salt to, to retain the water. Uh, I knew that our, um, I would eat periodically throughout the night and try not to let myself use the restroom a whole lot. Um, oh and then now I'm going to tell you, I'm competitive. Like I, I'll do everything in my power to help you, but I'll also do everything in my power to beat you. Right. So when right. I knew they told us, what's that? I said, that's a winning strategy. You want right? to be as easy as you could possibly. As high as, as, high as I could. So the then, yeah, exactly. So it, uh, they said that your first win will be at, at 8 a.m. 5.30, 5 o'clock, they call. They're like, hey, we need you downstairs in 30 minutes. I'm like, 30 minutes? They're like, yeah, we're, we, we changed it because I think they knew the pattern of like former contestants. I drank that morning, right? After everything I'd eaten the night before, I drank eight bottles of water, had six bowls of cereal and as much as I could stuff in my mouth while I went down for my way in, that's how I got to 283. I actually think I was probably 270, 275, right? But um, if Suzanne, if I'd had one more bottle of water, you could have made it. And then like, but then on the other end, when you did the final there, way, there nothing I could have done nothing yeah. more I could have done. Like, I love the people who are like, hi, don't you wish you could have gone to the restroom? Really? I mean, like I was in a sweatsuit all night, right? Yeah, and right? Barely, barely walked in with my head up. I was so sick. You were, I, I sent you a picture yesterday of me. Yeah. Um, it's the first time in my life that anyone ever hugged me and said, yeah. You need donut, right? And so I was like, I was so sick because I was 31 pounds underweight, but I was trying to win the show, right? It was yeah. like, I knew that, I knew that it was not something that, you know, a few donuts wouldn't fix. Do you know what Toma did the day before weigh in? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We, <laughs> we, we, uh, we were really close, Toma and I were. So, so we were kind of on the same path and, um, 
we, we did a few things that, that we don't really talk a whole lot about, especially in public, just because it's not really the healthiest thing, but we both knew that we were trying to win. It wasn't anything illegal. You know, it wasn't anything like that. It's just, you know, you just, you, you, you don't want to treat your body that way. I'm surprised that we didn't both pass out on the scale. Right. No, that is just intense. Cause it was both like food exercise, like just sleep, a- stress, everything. Ooh. Yeah. Like I, you, you put on weight when you're stressed, you put right. on weight when you don't sleep well, all the things. Yeah. So I had to do everything very, very, for lack of a better term, Zen. My life had to be here while right. maintaining a very high level of, of, of competition. Um, you know, I played college softball and soccer. I played uh, soccer for coach Bob Johnson. And um, we worked out, but it was nothing like I, I did on the show. Nothing. I, it, was, it, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. My average calorie burn was between five and 7,000 calories. Um, my average step count was 49,000. My highest step count was 69,000. That is remarkable. Like I have a hard time. I have mine set with a goal of 8,000. If I get my 8,000 steps in, then I get my milk house ice cream. for the day. <laughs> So like, I don't think I'm like, I don't know. It's not in me. No, I'm telling um, you what though. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for introducing me to milk house. Um, that day, um, it was life-changing. I feel like, like I had all the things in my arms and I knew that just as soon as you turned off the camera, I was going to indulge. It was, it was a beautiful moment. It's beautiful. Well, so what's interesting is I've been doing this new thing. It's all the range, yeah. you know, so I was, I've been recording some things and basically it just tells me stop eating dairy, like right. I eat dairy <laughs> all the time, cheese. Yeah. So that's it. Like, yeah. do, you, do you deal with much inflammation? Well, I mean, yeah, because I eat a lot of cheese. Dairy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So maybe I should stop that. Yeah. So maybe, yeah, right. Let me, I'll help you problem solve that. (laughs) Oh, I don't know. I just love it. I love dairy. So uh, we only have a few minutes left. So like, I I just want like your final thoughts, like all seriousness, what would you tell the next generation? So you're getting to influence the next generation of students here at Greenville University. They're athletes, they're involved in all sorts of things their, um, you know, majors in physical education, maybe sport management. I know you teach in both. Yes. So I'm just curious, like if you just had one thing that you could tell them, uh, for life, what would it be? Probably the one thing that I would say to them is that when you Trust in the Lord with all your heart and all your heart, your soul, your mind, right? And lean not on who we are, then our paths, just trust Jesus. You know what I mean? Um, take a chance on Jesus. If, if you don't know who he is, um, come talk to me, right? Um, we are very good at Greenville University at preparing students for their craft. And I love that. But above and beyond that, our whole mission statement is about preparing students for Christ-like character and service. That's what sets us apart. And if you try Jesus, if you follow him, if you seek him, that is the only relationship, that is the only thing, that is the only path where you will find complete fulfillment. And I would beg every one of you to go hard after that. Go harder after that than you do anything else, um, because uh, you know it, God. Uh, God doesn't. God doesn't always call the equipped, but He always equips the called. Right, and you and I are both called. Um, I'm not. I was not equipped to be a college professor. Right. I mean, I. I. But He's called me, and so thus He has equipped me. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't equipped to go on a reality TV show where I worked out six to eight hours a day, but he called me. So I was equipped. And as our students press on towards being great, being great chemists, being great musicians, being great business majors, being great PE teachers and elementary PE teachers and all the things, be a great follower of Christ because that is the only place that you'll find true fulfillment because it's the only relationship that will never let you down. And that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. Doesn't mean it'll be easy, but it'll always be worth it. 
And it's the adventure of a lifetime. 100%. 100%. There is nothing I, uh, the way that God has unlocked every door of my life has been remarkable. And it's, uh, and it's only by his grace. That's awesome. Well, thanks, Sonia. It's great Thank to you. chat with you today. Thank you. All right. See you. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. You too. Bye.